wouldn't it be nice to have a bank say, Amy, you tell me what you want and I'm going to do all of your budgeting for you. It sounds like a dream, right? Well, we actually have the technology available with some caveats with data privacy. So I am here to talk with Kurt K. Ruse, and we are so excited today to talk with him. He's the president of Tab Bank based in Ogden, Utah. We're talking about open banking and what we can do in terms of banking, fintech, personalization, and privacy. Kurt, thank you so much for joining us today. It's so nice to have you here and, and talk with you about this really interesting and transformational subject. Great, it's a pleasure to be here, Amy. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. So, so let's just start off talking a little bit about what is open banking? Right, so the concept of open banking is actually sharing the, the details of your financial transactions across financial service providers. And by doing that, you can create a whole picture of, of a person's financial health, for instance, if that's what you were really interested in finding out. And if you imagine uh, a financial health score, not a credit score, but a financial health score that, that could tell you how you're doing in terms of saving for retirement or just putting $500 in the bank for an emergency fund mm -hmm. or a vacation or whatever it might be. Um, and also provide you insights of how you're doing compared to people your age, people in your occupation, and you know who, who you could see. Am I saving as much as my peers? Am I on schedule, behind schedule? You know, it's all those things we like to say that keep you up at night, right? Okay. Financial finances are everybody's biggest worry. Um, well, not everybody's. I guess it's it's, it's not most of us. Most of most us worry us. about it. I'll, I'll raise <laughs> my me. hand, right? Me too. Yeah. Um, and so, so really, to, if you've ever used a budgeting app, right, the first thing you have to do is get information from all these different sources and put it into the budgeting app. And it's, it's so much work. Uh, so everybody wants a budgeting app. Um, you know, when you go shopping for banks, people say, well, do you have a personal financial manager? Do you have a, a budgeting tool? And we do. And so do almost all the banks that have online banking. Um, but you know what the adoption rate is? It's, it's something like 7%, meaning that only 7% of the people use it because it's, it's work. And, it is you know, it's work. I have one that I tried to use and then it just, it, it, it was kind of annoying and it wasn't exactly accurate and yeah. it didn't tell me exactly what I wanted. And so then I just quit using it. So I'm right, right in, I'm right in there with you with a low adoption rate. And that's the story up to today. You know, if you look at, you know, people have been working on these, these, you know, you, you can go back to, uh, was it Quicken and money and uh, Microsoft money. Um, so this has been around a long time, but it takes a lot of work. And so um, who wants to do that? Right. And, and it's usually unpleasant because if you work on your budget and it gives you a different answer than what you want, you're usually not in a good mood. So, um, but the problem I is that. I like my weight loss app. Like I yeah, just right. use it. It doesn't show me the numbers that I want. So <laughs> it might have something to do with chocolate chip cookies, but you know, maybe, we, maybe those cookies at night. I'm not sure. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> but that's, that's what it is about budgeting too. It's yeah. little things that, that will add up. that will put you behind. Most people do a decent job of understanding their big expenses, right? It's the little things that catch them. And so the idea of open banking is, uh, you know, we have the, we have the ability, um, we have the capability. If we could, if we could get people's data in one place, then we could, we could do it for them. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of fintechs that have been out there doing very real, really interesting things um, with the data. But the problem is that in the United States, the data flow is not, is not really controlled. Mm -hmm. And so um, as a regulated institution, that's, a, that's part of the FDIC, um, you know, as a bank in the United States, we're required to treat customer information with, with a high sense of co confidentiality mm -hmm. and respect. And so we cherish that. It's, it's really important to us. So we partner deeply with financial technology, fintech companies. When we do, then we're very careful about, you know, asking your permission to share your data and making sure we only share the necessary data and trying to do it in the safest way. Well, some of the fintechs, um, have been able to, to use technology to get your data without necessarily even without your permission yeah. using screen scraping technology and other things. And it's not necessarily a, a, a bad thing because our intent might not be 
bad by do, using these technologies. They're trying to give you a service to help you achieve a goal. But when you start sharing data in an in a unregulated way, you put everybody at risk. And right. so open banking is, is a world where, um, where a lot of financial institutions and, and fintech companies are partnering together to create regulations about how we share data. And then, because once you, once you do have open banking and the data is shared freely, then banking can disappear into the background where we would all want it, right? Um, even, even as a banker, um, I would love for all the bills I have to pay to get taken care of automatically for my big purchases. So I have somebody helping me decide whether I can afford that purchase or not. Mm -hmm. um, understanding, you know, my financial health picture and how it compares to, to my peer group, to other people that have the same kind of occupation I have, or maybe to people my age, uh, mm -hmm. maybe to a different demographic. All of those things are possible with data, but you have to be able to share it in a very regulated and controlled way. And the, the promise is, is to give us, you know, uh, to let us sleep at night, right. right? Just think, imagine if you went to bed every night knowing that your, your, your retirement's on track, your, your savings goals, your, you know, all of the things and, uh, that you're striving for, your new boat you wanna buy, whatever it might be. Um, you know, you know, you understand what that is because because a bank has told you, or a financial technology provider has told you, this is what's happening in your life today. You know, we all get little alerts from different apps these days that tell us different things. Um, from banking, uh, from a fraud prevention standpoint, you know, we can look at the the what normally happens within your transactions and say, is this normal or not normal? If it's abnormal, let's, let's ping and find out if this is something that, that Amy recognizes and you stop fraud in, in the tracks when you're right. able to do that. Right. Um, so there's a lot of potential benefit from it, all kind of fraud reduction, cost reduction, right. um, helping you find the best savings rate, helping you lower your, your cost of your mortgage, you know, mm -hmm. all of those things. So, how can we do this in a safe way? And, and I think, you know, that's the open banking that, that, that we're striving for. We're working hard with partners. Um, and I think the, the, the fear of sharing your data is overcome immediately when you can see the benefits, right? Yeah. But you got to know it's being done um, smartly and securely. So if I wanted to, if, I, as, if you had a bank account with Tab Bank, and we wanted to share your data with someone else, depending on what permissions you give, we would share, we could share your data in a way that it's masked so that there's no personally identifiable mm -hmm. information, your name, your social security number, your address, things to triangulate. You know, we could share it in so many different ways. The question is, you know, what makes you comfortable and what's the trade-off and do you control the trade-off? It's your data. So does that mean like, for example, if, if I were to give you permission to, share my demographic data, we could make comparisons about what other people in my industry and in my age bracket and my location were making comparatively to others, but they wouldn't have my own personal information. Is that right? That's, that's correct. And that's where we need to get, right? So that it, so that it really is something that, that the consumer's protected, that you understand what's being, you know, how your information's being used and who's using it what the benefits are and why am I giving my information out in the first place? Right. Um, you know, what is it going to provide back in value? Mm -hmm. And I think fintechs have taught the banking industry one thing, which is um, the banking industry for decades got, got into a position of uh, how do I profit off of a, off a customer relationship with me? And I've been doing banking for a long time. So I've been part of this system. Mm -hmm. But but my eyes, you know, started opening um, a few years back when you started understanding there is a different way to do it. You can say, you can build financial services around a customer and saying, if I have a healthy customer and I help them achieve financial success, then is that valuable to the customer? Well, I think anybody would say, yeah, I've, there's a value to that for me. If you if you took care of my budgeting, if you paid my bills for me, if you did all this, if you did my retirement planning for me and, and all, all I had to do was check in and say yes or no. Yeah, I would love that. But you know, that's the promise. So can a bank model be built around customer success? And the answer is yes, mm. um, it can be without, 
you know, having to make money off of things like overdraft fees or monthly maintenance fees, or those kind of things that we all loathe and hate. Yeah. Um, and so this new model of let's build a, around a customer success and then we will bring financial services from a, from a variety of providers to you because you're the customer instead of you coming to us and we'll say, well, you know, if you want to have, if you want to have the privilege of having a bank account with us, pay us $10 a month, right? So that, are you, are you, com are you um, basically combining some of the benefits of a financial advisor with the bank itself? Yeah, yeah it could be. It could be financial advisor, it could be insurance, it could be all kinds for businesses. We partner with payroll providers, so there's just seamless payroll. Um, one of our one of the fintechs that we we are partnering with, you know, is is a payroll service or, or uh, that basically a business can allow their employees to draw down on their earned pay at any time, mm -hmm. right? And those are the so it's a, it's all kinds of stuff to help the consumer live a better life. Um, and it's breaking down kind of the barriers and the friction points that, that oh, we have. It's so, that's so interesting to me and how everything really, as you know, in, you know, we're both in the technology industry for our, our day jobs, right? So I work with a Salesforce consulting partner with, for my day job. So we work with FinTech companies all the time. And we, we think in terms of like customer experience first, everything mm -hmm. right now is customer experience led. Yeah. And it has to be in order to compete. So I think what you're doing to really make this a customer experience first bank is super innovative and exactly what our market needs right now. So how are, how are you doing it differently at Tab Bank? How are, you be, how are you able to provide this customer experience with all of the regulations? What are you doing that's different? So we, we put the regulations and compliance with the regulations at the top of everything we do. We probably have one of the largest staff compliance areas for bank our size in the country. Uh, we also do it with deep partnership with fintech companies. And so uh, we, have, we have a number of deep partnerships already. We've got a bunch in the works and it's really about um, serving the customer. And so for us, um, that we have a, we've invested millions of dollars in a data platform and that source of truth that we can move safely and securely and protect Mm -hmm. um, that's where we put all our investment. And then we built uh, APIs, automated programming interfaces. So APIs to share the data seamlessly with, with other service providers. And we do it in a very um, secure way. And so it really is about the data. Everything's about protecting that, that source of truth, that one, that one piece of data that's, that's important in whatever transaction we're doing. And, and moving at its speed and sharing it across platforms in a very secure way. And so with that, you know, we, we have built a bank that, that is with the intention of being able to partner with the best service providers out there. And, and you know, instead of a one size fits all, we're gonna build every service at the Tab Bank way and then serve it up to you as a, as a customer. Uh, we're gonna say, what's the best for the customer go out and find the best service providers and partner with them to bring it to the customer. So. No, I love how we're just, you're rethinking everything, all of the systems and processes that were convenient and even necessary decades ago are not now. And, and yet we do things the same way over and over just because that's how they're always done. And I love that you're really disrupting that and re rethinking and retooling as we adapt to change. I think that's just absolutely fantastic. So my last question um, is, how do we find out more about Tab Bank and, and all of the innovative customer centric things that you're doing? Yeah, so, so follow us on Twitter and, it's, and our website is, is tabbank.com. So it's T-A-B-B-A-N-K.com. Check us out on our website and follow us on Twitter, follow us on LinkedIn, follow us on Instagram. Um, and, and you'll see as we talk about what we're rolling out. But I think, you know, what's, what's fun is the promise that we have in front of us. So if you follow us, you're going to see over the next couple of years, just more and more, you know, exciting product rollouts and services uh, designed around our customers, um, not designed around us. And so it's going to be a lot of fun. That sounds like a welcome, a very welcome. <laughs> oh, yes. I am so excited to bank with Tab Bank. So. <laughs> right. so thank you so much for we your look forward time. To it. Yes, thank you so much, Kurt. Yeah.